Welcome back to Inside the Heat. When any player decides to make an early entry into the NBA draft, it's a decision for a young man that can be life-changing in so many ways. For Hassan Whiteside, this decision came after only one year at Marshall University in West Virginia, where he led the nation in block shots and broke Marshall's single-season record, averaging more than five blocks a game. Hassan also recorded three triple-doubles en route to being named the Conference USA Freshman and Defensive Player of the Year. Leaving college after just one year was not a choice Hassan made lightly, knowing he would be faced with big challenges in his jump to the next level, the NBA. With the 33rd pick in the 2010 NBA Draft, the Sacramento Kings select Hassan Whiteside. Going into your NBA Draft, what were your expectations? Um, being a lottery pick, I mean, I was projected top 10. Uh, it, didn't, it didn't happen that way, but uh, I just kept working. He ended up going early in the second round to Sacramento, but what was it like sitting through that whole first round and not hearing your name called? You know, it was tough just, just listening to guy after guy after guy, team after team after team pass up on you. When you know you did so much in college, you set all these records. But I wouldn't care if my child went number 60. He made it, you know? And as a mom, it made me very proud. Jack of all trades, all around athlete, Hassan Whiteside. Going to the Sacramento Kings, what kind of environment was it for you coming out to a team that was struggling to find its own identity at that point? Oh, it's tough because now I'm on an organization that's trying to work their way up. That wasn't that wasn't winning, and, and now everything everything was moving so fast. Blocked by Hassan Whiteside. That's what he does. I think it was more frustrating for him when he went from being the number one guy at Marshall to not really getting to play. I think it was really hard for him because I think at the beginning of the process, there was a little bit discouragement. But he stuck in there, and like I kept telling him, you were meant to do this. But Hassan's perseverance would be tested again. A knee injury sidelined him, forcing him into several stints with the Sacramento Kings D-League affiliate, the Reno Bighorns. And then in July 2012, the harsh reality of life in the NBA hit Whiteside when he was released by the Kings. What do you remember feeling like when that happened? Oh, man, it was, um, what now? I was kind of speechless. I didn't really know what to do. I didn't know what direction to go. I just kind of went overseas and uh, just keep playing, you know? I wasn't gonna let that stop me. You wind up in China. First of all, let's talk about what life was like for you. Kid from Gastonia, North Carolina, and all of a sudden you're living in China to play your professional basketball. Oh man, it was, it felt like I was in a different world. I think the biggest thing was the cultural shock and being away from everybody. That's probably the only time he, he was without family. So just getting out there was just, it's like night and day. How did the Chinese fans like your game? They love me, they, you know, they, they showed a lot of support, you know, especially winning a the championship there. Hassan's journey back to the NBA was long and challenging and included one more stop overseas when he signed with the Lebanese basketball team, Al Matahed Tripoli. Whiteside, I love this game. You know, I took it as a learning experience, you know, and um, I just took it as a chance to get better and just know and appreciate, just appreciate every day you got on the court. That appreciation drove him through the hard times of chasing his NBA dream, and a strong support system encouraged Hassan that the price he paid along the way would one day be worth it. I told him, I said, the opportunity to come, just, just keep working. It's good to see how he picked up and kept, kept the motivation going, determination going, and the hard work. A lot of people don't know the hardships and, and the effort he put in to get where he's at now. The Miami Heat brought you in for an interview. What do you remember about your first trip to Miami during that time period when you met with Coach Spo and, and were here at the Heat facility? Um, just Coach Spo talking about what kind of guy you want to be in your career. Are you going to put in the work or are you going to just slack? And uh, just basically, I, just, I told him, I'm, I'm here to work, Coach. I looked him in his face. I said, all I need is a chance. When the Miami Heat signed Hassan Whiteside on November 24th, 2014, 
No one knew exactly the kind of impact he would make with the Heat. His path to get back to the NBA was challenging. Remember, he played in only 19 games in his first two seasons at Sacramento and then was out of the league for two years. Yet that experience and that adversity helped shape him and ready him. As for the Miami Heat, they saw Whiteside's potential and felt strongly it was worth giving him a chance. But before they signed him, Hassan was really unsure of what his next step would be in his career. So he was back in North Carolina at a local recreation center, keeping his body right and playing pickup games whenever he could. This place I've been playing at since I was five years old, and it's a lot of memories right here. Last November, you're working out at the YMCA and in North Carolina, mm -hmm. and you don't have a job in pro basketball. What are you thinking and feeling at that point? When I was a kid, I knew I wanted to be an NBA player. So, I mean, I could have went to China and made more money than if I went to the D League, but it wasn't about the money. I wanted to be an NBA player. This is Gabe. This is who was training me before I, I got to the Heat. What we did for about three months straight is work out every morning for about three hours. And the whole time I kept telling, we kind of just kept talking about it. it's not if, it's when. Hassan Whiteside's NBA dream was about to become a reality. The Heat call up Hassan Whiteside from the Developmental League. Whiteside comes down with his 10th rebound. The young man enjoys his first career double-double. It was a relief. Just knowing that I finally got a chance to really make an impact in the NBA game. Hassan's double-double against the Nets was the first of many he'd enjoy in his first season with the Heat. He would wind up with 22 double-doubles in 48 games. He made the most of his opportunity, uh, and that says something about him. Look at that. Oh, man. And he gave me a chance, and it's only right for me to give 110% of it every time. Whiteside with 14 rebounds, a record for the Heat for most rebounds in a quarter. His development last year was above and beyond, and we caught lightning in the bottle at the right time. A nationally televised yeah. game on ABC, Miami playing the Chicago Bulls. There it is, the triple-double for Whiteside. 14 points, 13 rebounds, those 12 blocks. And oh, by the way, he only played 24 minutes. With it being the first triple-double in blocks, it was a really big deal to me. How about that block? Whiteside again. Brooks gets past one guy, but oh, Whiteside! Nice. There's kids everywhere. During that game, we all texting each other like, are you seeing our boy? Like, he's getting it done. He is something to say. After that game, I really think a lot changed. The basketball world took notice, and Hassan finished fourth in the balloting for the NBA's 2015 Most Improved Player Award. While Whiteside did not win that honor, he did walk away with something much greater. You know, I had the Most Improved Life Award, you know, because my life is just, my life improved so much more. He says, Mom, I finally found me a family. It's surreal to me. I sit beside guys like Chris Bosh and um, catch lots from D-Wade. Out of you, Whiteside to the rim! The biggest thing as a, as a young player is going to be how he allows the leaders and captains on his team to help him mature and understand his importance. Hassan Whiteside's coaches and teammates continue to help his game grow and mature. He also shares a special relationship with another shot-blocking Heat legend and Hall of Famer, Alonzo Mourning. If I had a 10 blocks this season, he was like, oh, man, you can get 15. You should have 15. So uh, he always more, 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 more. He, he wanted to see the best out of me, so... I just know every day I come in, I'm going to try to give him 110%, because I know that's what he did. What are the things that you have to do to achieve the greatness that you've dreamed about your whole life? I'm just taking every day. Every day is a, is a day to get better. I'm working on holding the screen, more free throws, more spacing for my teammates. So each day, just working on something better. The white side story is truly a success story. I've watched him mature and grow so much. In the last couple of years, you know, I'm very proud of him. He's a fighter. I mean, he he don't give up. He believed in himself from day one. You know, a lot of kids don't make it. He went through a lot, but he's here, and I, I know he's here to stay. Back to Whiteside for a right-handed stuff. How do you balance being so satisfied with what you've accomplished, considering the road it took you to get here, to not being satisfied and wanting more? I'm going to just keep trying to build on what I did, you know? Every day is, is get better, get better, get better. And for the Miami Heat fans, I'm going to keep protecting the paint like I protect my dreams.
It continues to be one of the great NBA stories, and it's happening right before your very eyes. Hassan Whiteside wasn't discovered by the Miami Heat. Every NBA team knew about him since the 2010 draft. But his spectacular emergence here in Miami is no accident or coincidence. What it is, is the right time, right team, and right player creating the perfect storm of talent and determination mixed with an environment conducive to his development. Hassan Whiteside has gone from a man without a team to the anchor of one of the NBA's best defensive teams. An athletic and competitive seven-footer with game-changing talent, Hassan Whiteside is now blocking shots at a level that hasn't been seen in the NBA in nearly 30 years. Hassan Whiteside is rising in Miami with the Heat, and Heat Nation is enjoying every moment along the way. And thank you for watching Inside the Heat. I'm Eric Reed.